Well, Egypt's civil aviation minister says terrorism was more likely the cause of today's Egypt air crash rather than a technical failure. Flight 804 was traveling from Paris to Cairo with 66 people on board overnight when it disappeared over the Mediterranean. We know the plane, though, swerved sharply before plunging some 22,000 feet. To discuss this, former NTSB chairman Mark Rosenker joins us now from London. And uh, Mark, we do appreciate the time. You know, we did hear the Egyptian civil aviation minister take great care to say simply that the plane at this point was lost. But then he did go on to say that it was more likely that terror brought down the plane than technical error. Uh, your initial uh, thoughts uh, regarding that statement? I, I believe we are still very early in the investigation. Uh, accidents are always more than one thing, leading to a catastrophic failure. Uh, clearly, though, uh, terrorism is an element that's going to have to be meticulously, methodically examined. If they have decided, perhaps, that it is then more likely, how would that frame the investigation in its beginning stages? Well, it becomes a criminal activity rather than an accident investigation. So there will be more police effort put into it with support from the accident investigation teams. As the recovery uh, does continue both by sea and air in the Mediterranean, where it is believed again that the plane did go down, what is happening at uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport there in Paris? Well, the uh, police, I am sure, are taking a look at uh, the, uh, all of the uh, surveillance tapes that are having anything to do with uh, this aircraft coming in and departing. And anyone who uh, had gotten access to this aircraft, whether it's cleaning staff, whether it's catering staff, whether it is fueling staff, or whether it's the baggage folks or maintenance people, Anybody who got near that airplane, they're going to want to talk to. So they'll want to talk again uh, to folks there in, in Paris. So that means French authorities. Obviously, the Egyptian authorities are involved here as well, as are Greek authorities, as the plane did pass from Greek airspace into Egyptian airspace in the, in the moments before it uh, was lost to radar. Multinational investigations can obviously be very complex things. Mark, what will go into that? Well, in this particular case, they are still looking at it as an aviation accident, which then comes under the rules and regulations of ICAO's Annex 13. ICAO is a specialized agency of the United Nations, and they really create the policies and protocols for accident investigations, along with other issues of aviation safety and security. So in this particular point, if, if in fact this aircraft was in Egyptian airspace, they will lead this investigation. If it actually was still in Greek airspace, the Greeks have the ability and the authority to lead the investigation with the uh, Egyptians and the French as uh, participants in it. But uh, they may not want to uh, lead this investigation. They may say uh, we're sending it over to the Egyptians and then of course the French BEA, their version version of the NTSB will be working very closely with the Egyptians. Given the fact that we believe that these engines were a uh, consortium with uh, the U.S. manufacturer Pratt & Whitney, it may end up having that the uh, Pratt & Whitney company along with potentially an NTSB investigator participate as well. What involvement, if any, will the United States have? Only if, in fact, uh, they are asked to help. It could be the FBI, could be the CIA. Uh, certainly the NTSB would be available if they were invited in. But once again, if this becomes something other than an aviation accident, the law enforcement community will be responsible for the investigation, and the accident investigators will support them in a technical way. Given the global context in which this accident takes place, and given security concerns being already what they are, what changes, if any, might we see at major United States airports? Well, we've seen a great deal of, of change, and that's one of the reasons we are seeing uh, this uh, lengthen security lines. Remember that the uh, TSA did not enjoy a very good uh, report card last year when the Inspector General from Homeland Security was able to sneak through 90 to 95 percent of the time fake bombs and fake guns. So the new uh, TSA administrator, he doesn't want to have to go through that again. He's tightened up his, uh, his processes and protocols. Along though, unfortunately, there's been a cut in the number of screeners. 
5,000 screeners from 2013 until today have been uh, cut. So when you have fewer screeners, the, long, the lines get longer. Now with all of the interest, of course, in uh, global aviation terrorism, and that's been a focus here in the last couple of mm -hmm. years, given Paris, given uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, German wings, given the uh, issue of uh, the Egyptian air that it, it blew up, uh, excuse me, that was a, Ger a Russian airplane that blew up from Sharm el-Sheikh. Uh, the, the, the Mogadishu uh, terrorism attack that uh, someone came on board and was given a, uh, a laptop that had a bomb in it after he went through security. Uh, the airplane, of course, uh, had that explosion at a very low altitude, and that's why we were able to get a very good outcome. Had that airplane been up at 37,000 feet, we'd be trying to figure out what happened. Again, as this investigation does now begin, uh, we appreciate the time. Former NTSB Chairman Mark Rosenker, thank you for it. You bet.